That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing another test day for your tuberculosis patients and your tuberculosis test coming up. So let's get into the top test questions you're probably going to get asked for your TB patient. So let's go through the top three here. We're going to do in segments of three. I have a total of nine. I'm sorry, nine. <laughs> I have a total of ten test questions here. Well, let's go over the first three here. First question is... TB, what is the best time to collect a sputum culture? Is it the PM or the AM? When is the best time? Negative tuberculosis is always negative? Is that true? And if it's not true, then why is it not true? PPD tests are checked on a blank hours post your needle stick. So how long after your subcutaneous needle test where they put that little PPD under your arm, do we um, check to see if you had a reaction to it. So go ahead and pause the video and then do your best. I'm going to reveal the answers right now. All right, guys, time is up. You have clicked the play button again. I'm going to reveal the top three answers. Then we'll go through questions four through six and then do the last four, seven through ten. So, the first question here was, when is the best time to collect a sputum culture for your TB patients? Now, up here, I crossed out PM, or at night, because the best time to take a sputum culture for attesting your TB patients is in the AM in the morning, and that's before you wash your mouth out or before your patient brushes their teeth and starts doing their ADLs. Now, why? The reason why is because overnight, your patient's mouth has been closed. It's been given enough time to percolate or pretty much it's like a little cooker uh, for your TB, your tuberculosis concentration. So the more that your patient closes their mouth, the more time the bacteria has to kind of cook, in a sense, overnight. So we're going to have the highest concentration of TB if your patient is in an active form of TB during their hospital stay. Now, we usually give a three-test minimum of three negative sputum tests before we release your patient back to work, okay? A little tidbit there. So number two, a negative TB test. And I'm talking for negative TB, we're talking about your PPD, your purified protein, where we stick a little needle underneath your skin and see if you have a reaction in 48 to uh, 72 hours, basically two to three days. And I actually just gave you the answer for number three. So a negative TB PPD test, is it always negative? Not necessarily. Negative TB tests. You will show negative if your patient has a decreased immune response. Now I go over this in my tuberculosis lecture. And a decreased immune response can come from your body being a, having a decreased immune system. Usually we see this with patients on high quantities of prednisone or what's called your corticosteroid. Um, also your patients with some type of liver malfunction and also your patients with HIV because all those CD4 cells are now being eliminated from HIV. So what happens is your T cells and your macrophages are pretty much taken away from the fight and taken away from holding this tuberculosis in. So now we don't have that lump or that granuloma that has imprisoned our TB because all those other T cells are being eliminated from the body from having a low immune system. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. What is your PPD check? Your purified protein. That is checked every 48 to 72 hours post your stick, post the needle. So you're going to get this a lot. You're going to be in a hospital one day, and every so often, usually every six months to 12 months, you're going to be required 
to get a PPD test just to make sure that you are negative tuberculosis in the hospital setting. So you're going to fill out this paperwork. They're going to stick you with a needle. And you're going to get rechecked in 48 to 72 hours, two to three days. And they're going to say, okay, you don't have TB. Or you do have TB, maybe. You may have had a reaction. So they're going to confirm with a chest x-ray here, okay? And that's one of the things I forgot to include. You're going to have a chest x-ray if you uh, perform a negative TB test due to decreased immune response. They're going to confirm with a chest x-ray or they'll confirm with a sputum culture. So let's go into our next three. So we want to know what is the patho, pathophysiology of tuberculosis? How is active form initiated? And I kind of went over this in the last one here. There are three main causes. And if you guys remember, always list the three main causes and kind of what diseases cause a decreased immune system. And the next one is your four patients most highly at risk. Basically, your four at-risk populations. Which populations are most at risk? Something I didn't include in the tuberculosis lecture. So let's pause the video, brainstorm it, and then hit play, and I'm going to give you the answers here. Bad time is up. <laughs> okay, so let's go over the patho for our first question here. Now, I went over this again in my TB lecture, if you guys didn't see that, but your TB patho, basically this bacteria enters your lungs, this airborne uh, infection. Macrophages and T cells perform, or perform, form a perimeter, form a prison. They capture this TB bacteria and they put it in prison. And now they're all swarming around, making sure TB doesn't get out and cause havoc on the body. This is what's called a granuloma. So this little prison for TB is a granuloma. Now, how is active form caused? There are three main causes. We went over this a little bit in your last scenario here. Whoops. But you have decreased immune response with your TB patients. It's only pushed into active form when your patients are most commonly immunosuppressed. Something we call immunosuppressed. And most commonly, it's from prednisone, your corticosteroid, your liver transplant patients, because we're trying to detox things, not adequately enough, and also your HIV patients who have less CD4 cells, which is in the family of lymphocytes, those natural-born killers that I talk about in immunology lecture, um, are busy fighting off, and pretty much the CD4 cells are busy dying from the HIV that's attacking it. So, uh, what are the four at-risk populations? So, other than having immunosuppression, that's actually number two here, the four most at-risk populations are your patients living in crowded areas or crowded living. For instance, going to prison or going to a skilled nursing facility. <laughs> you like how I put those two in the same category? It's horrible. So crowded living positions has that airborne transmission. Anyone that is in the air around you, you guys can get transmission. So for instance, you can be on an airplane. You can be in a hostel. You can be in a dorm room. Kind of makes you think twice here. Two, we already went over. I'm going to pound it into your brain. Decreased immunity. Decreased or immunosuppressed. And make sure you guys remember these. Or you can have impoverished living. Or uh, economical disadvantage. Fancy words for poor. Poor patients as well as alcohol abuse, ETOH, are your highest at-risk populations for getting tuberculosis. So let's go over our last four here. And if you guys can pause your video and read those last four, we'll be going over those right now. 
So the next question's here. PPD test. You go for a PPD test just because you're a nurse and you're working in a hospital. And, you know, you just go for a routine um, purified protein test, which they stick underneath your arm. Now, your previous results were negative. This time, your PP test is positive. Now, what does that indicate? Now, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this one. All right, so you're, it's positive. What does it mean? Positive TB test under your skin 